Greetings, everyone, and welcome to 32 Manias with Mike. Uh, we Guys, we are at the 25th WrestleMania. Oh, we're, we're getting up there. We're getting up there, guys. I'm, I'm excited. This WrestleMania is mostly pretty solid. Mostly pretty solid. There are some, shall we say, design flaws in this WrestleMania, and I'll get to them. But um, this WrestleMania is fun. It's the, it's the first four-hour WrestleMania that we have. Um, some of them have come in under four. This one is a legit four hours. Um, so, yeah, a it's a little bit longer watch. But, you know, there was, a lot of, there was a lot of stuff going on here. A lot of stuff. Um, a lot of stuff I forgot, actually. But um, there was a dark match, of course, as there always is. Um, it was the... Uh, it was a unification match for the WWE for the Raw and SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Uh, it was the Colognes, Carlito and Primo, uh, beating Miz and Morrison. So uh, yeah, the Colognes were the first ever to unify the Raw and SmackDown Tag Team titles. Now, as I like to do, I'm gonna list off the Lumberjacks for you. Uh, let's see, we got. Evan Bourne, Paul Burchill, Tommy Dreamer, Goldust, Great Kelly, Charlie Haas, Kurt Hawkins, Hurricane Helms, Ezekiel Jackson, rest in peace, Big Rick, JTG, the Brian Kendrick, Mike Knox, Vladimir Kozlov, Jamie Noble, R Truth, William Regal, Zach Ryder, Shad Gaspard, Jack Swagger, Jimmy Wang Yang, and oh, Dolph Ziggler. Oh, you poor bastard. Um, but yeah, uh, they they didn't even show anything about this match on the pay-per-view itself. So I I think this was still on Heat. Maybe it was on YouTube. I'm not sure where it was, but it definitely wasn't part of the show. Um, but we open up, as WrestleManias are wont to do around this time, with the Money in the Bank ladder match. Now, um, this one's fun. This one's fun. I don't think it's as fun as 24, as the one uh, at WrestleMania 24, but it's still pretty good. The guys we have in this, we got Kane. We got Mark Henry, you got your MVP, you got your Shelton Benjamin, you got your Christian, you got your Finley with Hornswoggle, you got CM Punk, and you have a WrestleMania debut of Boa, 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 Kofi, Kofi Kingston. Ah, I, I like this because you can tell Shelton and Kofi are trying to outdo each other with crazy spots. And there are some really, really fun spots. Like, there's one point where um, Henry is trying to hold a ladder up, and Kofi scales a ladder that Mark Henry is actually holding up. It's really, really cool. Probably the coolest spot of the whole show. Um, but yeah, it, it was a good match. Um, CM Punk wins Money in the Bank twice. Twice. Uh, CM Punk was the first guy to ever win it twice. Edge was the first guy to cash it in twice. So, slight distinction there, but you know. Uh, good moment for Punk. I, I liked I liked the last year's match better, honestly. But this one was really fun too. I, it's nice. I got to see Tony Atlas come out with Mark Henry. You know, we all have a soft spot for Tony Atlas on the Mayhem Show. But um, okay. So let's let's talk about this. Is the first design flaw of this WrestleMania, Kid Rock. Um, Kid Rock. After this match, like after this match, the crowd is really hot like the crowd is excited but then kid rock gives like a 10 minute concert yeah like kid rock does a medley of like three or four songs and i'm not sure why um i mean maybe to get rid of all the ladders but in the middle of this concert random women just start walking down the ramp oh no i'm sorry these aren't random women this is the Miss WrestleMania Battle Royal. Yeah. Um, so we don't have a women's title match. Um, none of the divas get introduced, which is... I remember hating this when I first saw it, and I hate it even more now because it's interesting. So um, thank God for... Uh, for our good old friend Wikipedia here, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay more time to this match than the announcers did. I'm going to give you 
every diva and how long they lasted in this match. Now, um, you'd think this would be interesting because they had 25 women's wrestlers for the 25th anniversary of WrestleMania, so you'd think this would be a bigger deal. It wasn't. And um, it's kind of funny seeing some of these names because they've gone on to do vastly different things afterwards. But um, And uh, Hall of Famer Beth Phoenix is pretty much the standout here. She eliminates, God, I think, looks like over half of the people in this match. But uh, yeah, so um, we got Layla lasted seven seconds. Joy Giovanni lasted about twice as long as she did. Rosa Mendez, of course, gets thrown out. Um, Alicia Fox. Sunny. Sunny technically making her WrestleMania in-ring debut. No fanfare at all. You barely know Sunny was in there. She was only in there for a minute and a half. Uh, Tori Wilson is in there. All of these are under two-minute eliminations, by the way. This is a short match, but it's it gets good towards the end because you actually have like more moves and stuff, and people can focus on things, but I don't know. It's, it's a rough match to watch. Um, Jackie Gato was in there. Maria was in there. Gail Kim. Uh, Gail Kim actually eliminated herself, which I think is very hilarious because Gail Kim has a history of doing that in these battle royals. By the way, these battle royals, you didn't have to be thrown over the top rope, just thrown to the floor. So it, it's kind of lame. But um, So Gail Kim, Jillian Hall, uh, Eve Torres, Tiffany, who went on to be Taryn Terrell, of course, Kelly Kelly, Molly Holly. Molly Holly came back. No fanfare at all for this. Uh, Maurice, uh, Katie Lee Birchall, Natty. This is uh, this is younger Natty. You almost don't recognize her, except for the little pink in her hair. Victoria. Victoria came back for this match. No fanfare at all for it. Brie Bella and Nikki Bella, both eliminated by Beth Phoenix. This was back when you they actually still looked like twins. Um, Mickey James was in here. Mickey James, the the last the last four divas before the winner. Had a, had a really good back and forth. Mickey James, Michelle McCool, Beth Phoenix, and Molina. They had they had a really good back and forth. Um, they paired off. Uh, but the winner of this, you know, celebration of twenty five years of WrestleMania, celebration of twenty five divas. The winner of this is Santina Morella. If you don't know who Santina Morella is. Santino in a wig. Yeah. The less said about that, the better. Uh, this goes on to Santina fighting Vicky Guerrero in a hog pen match. Seriously, it, it was it's just not good. It, it seems like something that someone wrote on paper and people laughed at, it, and in practice, oh, it's not good. It's not good at all. Now, um, the next match is yet another design flaw of this WrestleMania. Because uh, this was, this match was supposed to be Chris Jericho versus Mickey Rourke. Star of The Wrestler, star of Iron Man 2. Um, this was supposed to be the big celebrity match. You know, like we had Mayweather, like we had Ake Bono, we'll have Snooki in the future. This was supposed to be that big moment. And... Everything got messed up because Mickey Rourke talked about it, and then Mickey Rourke's people got involved, and they didn't want him wrestling before the Oscars because they thought it might hurt his Oscar plans. Turns out he didn't win the Oscar, which is a crock of shit, by the way. He deserved the Oscar that year. If you haven't seen The Wrestler, go see The Wrestler. Seriously, stop this video right now. Come back to it. Go see The Wrestler. Cry a little bit because you will. Come back and then finish this. But The Wrestler, really, really good movie. I also think it's kind of funny that they um, play a lot ACDC Shoot to Thrill over this WrestleMania, and that's one of the key songs in Iron Man 2, also with Mickey Burke. Um, but yeah, so this turned into Chris Jericho hating all the legends. Which, you know, fine. Mickey Rourke was sitting ringside, and it was Chris Jericho up against... Ricky Steamboat, Rowdy Roddy Piper, and Jimmy Snuka with Ric Flair in their corner. Flair obviously not wrestling because he was retired the year before. Um, and it's it's elimination match, so Jericho has to beat all of them. 
Jericho beats Snuka and beats Piper pretty easily. But the standout of this match, Chris Jericho versus Ricky Steamboat, man. Oh, it's so good. Ricky Steamboat could probably still have a match today that would be better than half the matches we see on a on a daily Raw. He He's in such good shape. Like, Jericho and Steamboat t- tear the house down. Jericho ultimately wins, obviously. But then uh, he invites Mickey Rourke into the ring, and Mickey Rourke dances a little bit and knocks Chris Jericho out. So, you know, it's it's fine. It's not what it should have been. I would have loved to see Chris Jericho versus Randy the Ram Robertson, but we didn't get that, unfortunately. Um, but this is something I totally forgot was at this WrestleMania. I almost forgot it existed, but it's damn good. Um, not a design flaw at all. The next is an Extreme Rules match. Matt Hardy versus Jeff Hardy. I believe both of their last appearances at WrestleMania. For now. Who knows? Uh, I believe so. I'm not I don't think either of them are at 26. But um yeah, this match is fun. This match is I think what they wanted to do in TNA. <laughs> this match is really, really good. A lot of ladder spots, um and Jeff the spot monkey. <laughs> He misses a big high spot off a ladder, and Matt capitalizes with a twist of fate through the chair, like uh, like he put Jeff's head on a chair and did a twist of fate that way. And it was really good. Matt beat Jeff, and he was no longer broken, I think. I think that's how that works. I'm not positive. A drone came in. I'm kidding. None of that happened. It should have. None of that happened, though. But um, the next match is for the Intercontinental Championship. And this is this is kind of weird. It's it's fun, but it's kind of weird. So um, JBL comes out and he's he says he's going to because he's returning to Texas, you see, and he's from Texas. So he says he's going to give the most dominant title win in all of WrestleMania history. And Rey Mysterio comes out first time in a while for Rey Mysterio because he's been injured. He had he had surgery five times on his left knee. Um. But Rey Mysterio comes out as Heath Ledger's Joker. Now, I remember at the time, this was super controversial. Um, even JR doesn't really know what to say to this. Now, in Rey's defense, I'm sure he planned this outfit months before Heath Ledger died. Like, as soon as he saw Dark Knight, I'm sure he, he was like, oh, I'm going to be Joker for WrestleMania. That'll be awesome. And as a guy who is dressed up as Heath Ledger's Joker for Halloween, I don't see any harm in it. You're just dressing up as an iteration of the Joker. Like, if Jack Nicholson passed away and someone dressed up as Jack Nicholson's Joker, that wouldn't be in poor taste either. But, and, and Ray looked really good. As Lucha Joker, he looked really good. I really, really dug the mask. The mask was fantastic, and he painted his, uh, his face hole with the, with the smile and everything. He looked really good. Props, huge props to Rey Mysterio. Probably one of my favorite outfits he's ever done. But um, so JBL attacks Mysterio before the bell, and then as soon as the bell rings, Ray turn turns it around. Six one nine, West Coast pop, boom. Ray wins in twenty one seconds, and JBL is so distraught that he quits, and that's officially JBL's last match. <laughs> So yeah, um, weird. It's fine, but it's weird. But um, all right, before we get to these last three matches, because they require some time, uh, let's talk about the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame this year, very, very, very Texas themed. Um, we have, of course, the headliner, Stone Cold Steve Austin, inducted by Vince. Um, Austin, he, he's great. He after all the Hall of Fame inductees are introduced, he comes out, he does his little ATV thing. Drinks a lot of beers, all that stuff. Also, Ricky Steamboat was inducted this year by Ric Flair. Very good speech from what I remember. Uh, they showed a little bit of it. If you haven't watched the Hall of Fames, you should really go back and watch the Hall of Fames. There's a lot of really good stuff there. Uh, Cowboy Bill Watts was inducted by Jim Ross. Awesome. Howard Finkel was inducted by Mean Gene Oakland. Very cool. Um and uh, it says here on Wikipedia that he was the first employee hired by WWE in 1975. Good to know. Um, now, 
this last inductee into the Hall of Fame is kind of the guy everyone points to when they say, maybe we're running a little thin, boys. And that's Coco Beware. <laughs> now, I give props to Coco Beware because he did have a lot. He did have a lot of fans in early WrestleManias. He really did. He did a lot of stuff back in the early '80s and early '90s, and he was inducted by the Honky Tonk Man, who ironically isn't in the Hall of Fame. I think that's his choice, though. But uh, yeah. So, you know, kind of a smaller class for 2009, but I think that's because they wanted to stick to a mostly Texan theme. All right. Um, so let's 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 move into these main event matches. First of all, there, there's a design flaw in how these matches are arranged because what I should be talking about right now is the Triple H Randy Orton match. That's not the one I'm talking about now. That's the main event for some reason. Um... Next match is Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels. Guess who wins? Uh, no, but th this is the match that everyone talks about. Um, I think it's I think it's now the match people most refer to. What's the greatest match you've ever seen? Or what's the greatest WrestleMania match? I don't know if it's the greatest one I've ever seen. It's very, 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 very good. But I think even even back when I was watching it the first time, I knew Taker was winning this. And I mean they they try and get you a lot. They do, but I I don't know. Like it's a really good match. The finish is dynamite. The finish is really, really good. Uh Taker catches Sean out of a standing moonsault to tombstone him. Very cool. But um I don't know. Is it the greatest WrestleMania match? It might be objectively one of the greatest. Is it my favorite? No. No, it's not my favorite. I'm not sure. Exact. I kind of liked Ric Flair, Shawn Michaels a little bit more. You know, I, I, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a really good match. If you've never seen it before. Go out and find this match because it's fantastic. It's Taker and Sean at the top of their game. Um, yeah, it's it's just amazing. The entrances alone are fantastic too because you have Sean descending from the heavens. You have Taker rising from the depths. It's really, really good. Um, but now we move into a triple threat match for the World Heavyweight Championship. And it's the champion Edge going against John Cena and Big Show. And this has to do with a love tri triangle with Vicky Guerrero for reasons. I don't know. It was a weird time back in 2009, but um, this match is this match is really fun. It's it's really really fun. You have um, Cena and Edge occasionally teaming up to go after the Big Show. Big Show gets caught in the ropes at one point, and it's really kind of fun because Cena kind of mocks him a little bit. Um, and there's also like the finishes that Cena eventually lifts up Edge, Edge and Big Show at the same time. Yeah, it's it's really impressive. Um, but Cena gives the AA to Big Show, then AA's Edge on to Big Show. And yes, we're calling it the AA now. It's no longer the FU. It's no longer the SDFU. It's a shame. But um, but yeah, John Cena wins the World Heavyweight title. He celebrates in the crowd. It's pretty good. Um, now we get to the last design flaw. Triple H versus Randy Orton. For the WWE title, Triple H the champion. The build for this match is amazing. It's a little ridiculous, but it's also amazing. Um, basically, Randy Orton is taking it upon himself to assault all the McMahons. Um, he attacks Stephanie a couple times. He attacked Shane. He attacked Vince. I think he attacked Linda too. I'm not positive on that. But um, yeah, then Triple H does the home invasion thing where we see Randy's fake wife. <laughs> there's a lot of really cool stuff going on. And then we're told that if Triple H gets disqualified, he loses the belt. That is the design flaw in this match. One of them. There's another one. Um, so Orton comes out without legacy, and Triple H throws a sledgehammer through a mirror and comes out to the ring. Then within 
the first three minutes of the match, Orton's hit an RKO and Triple H's hit a pedigree. That's the second design flaw in this match. It's... I understand they were trying to one-up Taker and Sean. You can't. You just can't. Like, And plus, this match goes 25 minutes. Oh, my Lord. It's a long match. Like, I would have rather seen five more minutes go to anything else. Anything else. Really anything else. But, um, yeah, Triple H uh, re- quelms the urge to, to get disqualified, even though he does use a sledgehammer when the ref's not looking. So, really, what was the point anyway? Um, and Triple H beats Randy Orton to retain the championship. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And um and unfortunately now we're in the point where I can't guess WrestleMania is because they tell you where the next WrestleMania is gonna be. So it's in Phoenix. Uh we're going to Arizona for WrestleMania twenty six. That means it's gonna be a hot one. So uh excited for that. I forget which matches happen at WrestleMania twenty six completely. It, besides the Taker and Sean rematch. I don't remember a damn thing that happens at WrestleMania 26 because I'm not sure if you guys have kept up ever since WrestleMania 20, John Cena and Triple H have been every world title match. And you wonder why these blend together. You wonder why some of these aren't as good. Like there's no, there's no diversity. In, in the world title matches. Who knows? Does that change your WrestleMania 26? I'm not sure. I'll find out. But yeah. Uh, we shall see. So um, if you guys have any comments about WrestleMania 25. If you think I'm crazy for not automatically assuming that Taker Michaels is the best match of all time. Let me know. Hit me up at MadMike4883 on the Twitter machine. Uh, hit up some comments on the on the YouTube here. Hit up us on hit us up on Facebook. Hit us up on uh, Twitter at Mayhem Show with hashtag MM. And uh, yeah, so we'll see you guys in the desert for WrestleMania 26 for Mad Mike. I'm Mad Mike, and this has been 32 Manias with Mike.